Good morning and welcome to First Church. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. So it's good to be here to give God thanks and praise. Um, if you would look in your bulletins and find your connection card, and if you'd be willing, please, to fill that out so that we know that you are here. And also, it's a way for you to let us know prayer concerns and uh, ways that you can participate in the life of the church. So please fill that out. Next, we have one service starting next Sunday, and it is at 10. Now, you can come at 9, but... There, you'll be back here with Mark. Um, Mark comes early to get things set and ready to go. Um, but we will be here at 10 for service, and it's Confirmation Sunday. So we will see our uh, five of our young folks confirmed. Um, then we are having a movie night. Emmaus and Chrysalis and, and First Church together, we're inviting you to a movie night on June the 8th. And the parking lot, it's the Mitchells versus the machines. And we'll have ice cream and popcorn and water available. And if you want anything else, bring it. Um, if you want pop, you need to bring your own pop. Um, but come and enjoy. Bring a lawn chair. And there are rain provisions. So if it's raining, we're coming inside. And we'll still have the um, movie. And we're going to have some fun things to go forth before the movie and some Minute to Win It games and some other good fun things. So come and enjoy. Be a part. New member class will meet um, on the 9th from at 9.15 to 12.15. And just to get you all connected, and um, new members will be received then on June the 30th. And you can help with the July 4th float um, or ride in the church bus the day of the parade. Please check the connection card. It's always lots of fun to do that and to be in the parade at Granville. And uh, we have been really good lately that we've won two years in a row for our, our bus decorations and our float kind of thing. So... Um, that, that's just an extra bonus. So come, and uh, we're going to have flyers to pass out this year to talk about Vacation Bible School and all the cool things that are going on here at First Church. Vacation Bible School is coming up June the 16th through the 18th, and it will be Hometown Nazareth. So again, see the bulletin for um, ways that you can help and Sign up on that connection card. And today is Memorial Day. And before we move to that real quick, just to let you know, our shower ministry is highlighted in the metro section of the dispatch this morning. So um, check that out. And we are working on making sure you can go right to the piece in our uh, shower ministry in the website area and be able to give Peter said he had to pull over several times because his phone was just going crazy from other people from other churches on his way here this morning. So um, he was illegal. He pulled over and checked things out. The, huh? Okay. And the other thing I'm going to bring up real quickly is you will see in your bulletin that next Sunday you will receive a little church. Last year, we had the flat Jesus. This year, we have the little church. And it talks about that when you leave this place, you are the church. And this is the way to remember and to remind you and to help you to share the church with others. It's the love of Christ and how we reach out, and that's being the church. Today is Memorial Day Sunday, and we are thankful for all of those who gave their lives so that we might be here um, to be in freedom. And thank you for the, the gifts that they have given. And so we have a, a, a video to show you. Extraordinary men and women went before us with unmatched resilience, enduring hardship, 
when called upon to defend and liberate. They said, yes. They found courage to rise with every sun. Loyalty toward their country. Discipline for every command. Even in the darkest hours. They said, yes. They cherished and fought for freedom. So those coming behind them were assured of it. And when the moment came for them to give it all, their futures never to be written, they said, yes. Today, we think upon their sacrifice and find our way to honor them, saying yes to making the most of what they gave us and filling the earth with God's goodness. We thank them for their yes. They will never be forgotten. Again, thank you for all of those who have given us this gift of freedom. Let us have a word of prayer. Thank you, Lord, for those who have given their lives so unselfishly. Thank you for the freedom that we have to worship you. Thank you for your gift of grace and your saving power. Through Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now may we stand and sing together our opening hymn.
Amen. Will you pray with me? Oh Lord, we give you thanks. And we ask that you help us to remember that whatever our lot that you have taught us to say, it is well with my soul. Lord, we give you thanks that you are with us in all circumstances. We give you thanks that you have sent your son, Jesus, who has died on the cross, risen from the dead, and lives with us through the power of the Holy Spirit. We thank you that we are never alone and that you have come to save us. Lord, we ask that you will help us to remember those that have gone before us, who have given their lives so courageously that we might live in freedom. We thank you for those who shared their family members with us, who sacrificed with them. And Lord, help us to remember of the sacrifice, not only that you have given, but they have also. Help us, Lord, to be your hands and feet in this world to make a difference, to be your representatives, to let others see of your love and grace. And when we fall, Lord, we know you are there to pick us up. So let us, let us let you Let us go to you for that gift of forgiveness. Help us to go forward when we think we can't take that next step. Help us to to reach out when we are hurting, but to continue to reach out in love, for that was the example that you gave us. Help us, Lord, to go as your disciples into this hurting world. We lift up those that need your healing power, Lord. Those who are lost and lonely. Those who are searching for their way to go. And Lord, be with us, for we are in that category at some point in time, too. And we thank you that you have taught us to pray by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. There's so much we have lost As we look down the road Where all the prodigals have walked One by one the enemy Has whispered lies And led them off as slaves But 
we know that you are God, yours is the victory. We know there is more to come that we may not yet see. So with the faith you've given us, we'll step into the valley unafraid. Yeah. As we call out to dry bones, come alive, come alive. Good morning. Our scripture reading this morning is from the book of Ezekiel, the 37th chapter, verses 1 through 14. The hand of the Lord was on me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord and set me in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me back and forth among them, and I saw a great many bones on the floor of the valley, bones that were very dry. He asked me, son of man, can these bones live? I said, sovereign Lord, you alone know. Then he said to me, prophesy to these bones and say to them, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. This is what the Sovereign Lord says to these bones. I will make breath enter you, and you will come to life. I will attach tendons to you and make flesh come upon you and cover you with skin. I will put breath in you, and you will come to life. Then you will know that I am the Lord. 
So I prophesied as I was commanded, and as I was prophesying, there was a noise, a rattling sound, and the bones came together, bone to bone. I looked, and tendons and flesh appeared on them, and skin covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, prophesy to the breath, prophesy, son of man, and say to it, this is what the sovereign Lord says. Come breath from the four winds and breathe into these slain that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me and breath entered them. They came to life and stood up on their feet, a vast army. Then he said to me, son of man, these bones are the people of Israel. They say, our bones are dried up and our hope is gone. We are cut off. Therefore prophesy and say to them, this is what the sovereign Lord says. My people, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from them. I will bring you back to the land of Israel. Then you, my people, will know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and bring you up from them. I will put my spirit in you and you will live and I will settle you in your own land. Then you will know that I the Lord have spoken and I have done it, declares the Lord. The word of God for the people of God. Would you pray with me? Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be holy and acceptable in your sight, for you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So this morning, we are continuing the series we've started with a shift to some modern worship music that we heard, and the praise team did a great job. I think they learned that this week. They learned it this week, and it was fantastic. Um, we're going to bounce back and forth in this series between some traditional music, hymns we hopefully know and love, and some modern music to help us all better understand and appreciate the ways that different types of the music that we use and worship helps us, can help us to grow in our faith, and, and the larger role, really, that music and the songs that we sing help uh, the role that they play in helping us to understand scripture and understand the, the larger role that scripture has in helping, that songs have in helping us understand scripture and, and theology, you know, what we read in the Bible and what we believe about God. And each week has a, a bit of a theme. I have to remember not to turn this way now, to hit the mic. Each week has a theme, and this week really is, the, the theme is of how the songs we sing can help us to find a new message or remember a message from Scripture that maybe we have known, but maybe we have forgotten. And... The reason we're looking at this is, you know, with, with the exception of the last 150, 200 years or so, most people didn't know how to read. And so the way, that for the most of our history as people, but the history of our faith, the way that we conveyed um, the lessons of our faith was through art and through music, through what we like to talk about as the oral tradition, the uh, essentially sharing stories and sharing songs with one another, passing them down from one generation to the next. And that's how we taught each other. That's how people learned the stories of our faith. And so all of this played a large role in how people grew as Christians, but it still plays a large role today. We just don't recognize it quite as much as previous generations did. So that, in a nutshell, is why we are taking this approach for the next several weeks. Pastor Barb 
uh, had a little bit of a challenge last week of pairing the start of a series with Pentecost. So I thought I'll just say it in case people have missed the point. Now on to Ezekiel. Ezekiel is one of the, the major prophets we call him. He is major as opposed to minor, not because he's more important, but because his book is longer. That's all. That's the distinction. The major prophets have long books. The minor prophets have short books. Uh, of the majors, that's Isaiah, Jeremiah, slash Lamentations, Ezekiel, and Daniel, the five books. Um, Ezekiel is the one that, in my experience with church folk, um, most are the least familiar. And it's because Ezekiel is strange. It's also why I like Ezekiel the best because Ezekiel is weird. Just go read it. It's sort of long, but you can make it in, the, in a couple days. It's weird. Ezekiel plays the typical role of a prophet, much like all the others. He's called by God. He said, here's what you need to go say. He goes and says it, and generally the people don't listen to him. But the way his ministry took shape at least at the very beginning of it, was through God telling him to go do some really weird stuff. And the things that God asked him to do were symbols of what was happening or what was going to happen to the people of Israel as, as they continued to not listen and not follow God. Ezekiel's book starts during the exile. It starts, some scholars say, it starts on his birthday, his 30th birthday, the, the year when he would have been consecrated as a priest in the temple had he still been living in Jerusalem. And it starts before the fall of the temple in Jerusalem. Ezekiel was taken into exile along with the first group, but the temple had not yet been destroyed. So that just dates it for you. And Ezekiel begins his ministry by warning people, just like all the other prophets, that they were acting wrong, wrongly. They were both rejecting God and acting as though they themselves were gods. Not a very good place for the people to be at. And so Ezekiel balanced, like the other prophets, words from God that spoke warning and judgment with words of hope. These two concurrent messages reminding the people of the consequences of their actions and yet that there is always hope because even in exile, God will not abandon them. And so Ezekiel was given a number of really powerful incredible visions from God. And the passage that, that Karen read for us this morning is one of those visions. We talk about it often as the Valley of Dry Bones. Barb has been singing about the dry bones, <laughs> dem bones, dem bones, all week. She even said, why aren't we singing that in church? And I said, because Barb. I thought of a different song. That's the only reason. The Valley of Dry Bones. It gives us a picture. When, when you read the scripture, you can envision it. At least I can. I can see it. And it gives us a picture not just of the bones, but of God's promise to give his people a new heart, a soft heart, heart to replace their hearts of stone. This vision that God gave Ezekiel shows us that, that the people's rebellion against God led to death. Spiritual death and physical death. Yet Ezekiel is told to speak to the bones. Prophesy to the bones. And when Ezekiel did that, the Spirit of God, literally the breath of God, 
blew through the valley and remade them calls our minds back to the creation story when God breathed life into the humans that he had made out of dust and dirt. All of the visions that we see in Ezekiel are given to us with the goal of showing God's determination to defeat evil, not just cosmic evil that we can hardly wrap our minds around, but human evil. The things we do to one another. And, and then to usher in a new creation and a time when God's glory and God's presence will be recognized as always among us. There's a beautiful vision in Ezekiel about that where Ezekiel sees the throne of God on a chariot that is carried by really creepy looking angels. Read Ezekiel's description of angels. Then you'll know why Gabriel said to Mary, don't be afraid. That's another sermon. But Ezekiel is really focused on this idea that God's glory and presence is not in the temple in Jerusalem, but it is here among us, right now. So this vision from Ezekiel 37, it's one that I find to be one of the most powerful in all of Scripture. Ezekiel is just plopped down in this valley, littered with bones, human bones. And those bones, it tells us, were very dry, which is a very dry way of saying they were absolutely parched, sun bleached, and totally dry. And God asked Ezekiel, Son of man, can these bones live? And Ezekiel says, I don't know, God, only you do. So God says, Ezekiel, will prophesy to these bones and tell them to live. Tell them that they will be brought back to life. Tell them how they will be brought to life. And Ezekiel did it. And as he spoke, lo and behold, what does God do? puts flesh on the bones, covers them with skin, and then breathes life back into the bodies, made them once again into living people. I love this vision because it reminds us that no one is too far gone. No one is beyond God's ability to breathe life back into them, into us. And no one is beyond God's power to redeem and to save. And so when Ezekiel gave this prophecy, he was speaking specifically to the Israelites living in exile. That's his target audience. They were spiritually dead. They're portrayed in the Bible as having strayed so far from God beyond anything that we can imagine. They were downtrodden also because of their sins to the point that they had no hope. And Ezekiel comes before them to proclaim that God's power is still greater than all of their sin. There's a song about that too. Sometimes I have to beat Barb to it. They needed hope. 
They needed to have hope that God would restore them. They didn't believe it was possible, and so the prophets like Ezekiel come to tell them that yes, it is possible, and not only that, it will happen. That God would restore them to life and to the home that God had given them. We, however, have this tendency to look on this story as though we are laying in that valley of dry bones. There's nothing wrong with that. It's a decent interpretation. God's power is still great enough to breathe life into your dehydrated spirit. But that's not what Ezekiel is focused on telling us. As we were putting together this uh, sermon series, Pastor Barb and I were talking about some possible scriptures, and, and I really wanted this one. I think I, we were talking about it, and I think I just wrote it down on the sheet and didn't even give her a chance to talk and give her opinion. I just said, I'm doing this one. The scripture and this song that, that we heard this morning they immediately came to my mind when we started to talk about ways that the songs we sing influence our faith. I already mentioned that Ezekiel is one of my favorite prophets. And this theme that runs throughout Ezekiel of life coming out of death is the reason why. I also will say I used to not be such a fan of modern worship music. I grew up going to a traditional service in my home church. That's the music I grew up with. That's the music I enjoy the most. Most of modern worship music didn't, and most of it still doesn't resonate with me, but every once in a while, there's a song that I hear that just hits home. One that I immediately connect with. And the first time I heard this song, uh, Come Alive, I had to go look it up. I was driving to work one morning and I heard it on the radio and as soon as I got to work, I opened my computer and I went to Google and I searched for it and I think I listened to it on repeat for an hour. I did that because this song finds a way to thread that needle between some of these different interpretations, some of these ways we look at the scripture. Some of the ways we see Ezekiel's vision. It makes Ezekiel's appeal to the bones a personal one. That Ezekiel speaks the word of God and life is restored. It places us, the, the listeners, there in the valley, not as dead dry bones, but as the voice calling out to the bones, urging them to be renewed by the breath of God. And in doing that, it, it reminds us that our calling, our calling out to these bones, calling them to life, that the only way we can call these bones to life is because God has breathed life into us. Perhaps the thing that caught my ear and, and my heart the most is the belief and the insistence in the, in the words of the song that the breath of God can bring life even to the driest of bones. So our second point remains the same as the first. No one is beyond the power of God's grace. And one thing that, that this song in particular that, that we heard has helped me to better understand is that you never know what new, when and where you might find a new insight into Scripture. You never know when it's going to come. I will admit that I... Actually, I don't want to admit it, but I'm going to say it anyway. I often get frustrated when people miss the point, the very obvious point in Scripture. I'm not going to point fingers. I'm not going to look at any of you. 
because I don't want you to say I'm talking to you directly. I'm not. I'm just stating, in, stating it in general. I especially get frustrated when people miss the point of Scripture that speaks to my soul. Because how dare they? This includes the Valley of Dry Bones. When we look at it only as God breathing life into us as individuals, we miss the point. That is one way we can read it. There's nothing wrong with that. We need God to breathe life into us. Period. Amen. But it's also about something more. So the moment that I first heard Lauren Daigle, the, the singer, singing out, we call out to dry bones, come alive. I knew that she got the point. Ezekiel's vision of dry bones comes with this underlying message that God expects us. God expects us to call out to dry bones come alive. Ezekiel's vision shows us that God's work in the world is often a partnership between God and us. Sure, God can do it all on his own. No doubt in my mind. But God also knows that our efforts to share the grace and love of God, those things can offer a real point of connection for others. That our real experiences with God's grace can help others to see and experience God's grace. So this scripture, the Valley of Dry Bones, and, and this song, they are a call to action for us. A reminder that we have a role to play. A role in ushering in God's kingdom here on earth. We can't do it alone. We can't do any of it by ourselves. But God wants us to help. Ezekiel never would have thought about calling out to these dry bones if God didn't tell him to. God asks him right at the beginning, can these bones come to life? And he says, I don't know. You tell me. We need to see that God is inviting us to be partners in his work of redemption. That God is asking us to let his power infuse our lives, to flow through us into the world, through our, through our lives, through our words, so that his, his message of endless mercy and unrelenting love is the breath that we hold in our lungs. It's a humbling realization. Stop and think about it. That God breathes life into us so that we can breathe life into others. So when we follow Jesus, when we let God's Holy Spirit breathe life into us, we become vessels. We become conduits of God's grace, God's mercy. It gives us the ability to make sense of that message of hope that we receive from God. And that message is that no one is beyond the power of God's grace. You get the point? See, the beauty and the power of the gospel is found in this dual message. This balance between understanding God's saving grace in our lives and our task to go and proclaim it. We might not be exiled in Babylon. 
we, not, we might not be totally dry and lifeless. But we've all had those moments when we felt dry, when we felt hopeless, when our spirits were parched. Ezekiel's message that dry bones can come alive is part of our story. It's part of the new life that we have found through the Holy Spirit. But wait, there's more. Ezekiel's message isn't just about our personal renewal through God's love. It's about community revival, too. His vision is a powerful image of renewal through the movement of the Holy Spirit. All because someone, Ezekiel, you, me, Peter, like we heard in the scripture last week, all because someone decided to listen to God's command to call out to dry bones and tell them about God's unending grace. If Ezekiel's message does one thing, it's that it should encourage us to remember that there is hope. Even in the darkest and driest and deadest of places, It challenges us to believe that God can breathe life into dry bones. Yours or mine or someone else's. And most of all, it dares us to join our voices with Ezekiel. Confident that no one is beyond the power of God's grace. Amen. Would you pray with me? Lord, as you have breathed new life into our dry bones and dead spirits, we pray that you would fill us with such a passion for your grace that we could not help but go and call to life your children who are dry and hopeless to show them through our lives, through our love, the fullness of your glory and the power of your grace. Amen.
I like that one too. It gets the point. Take my lips and let them be. Take my feet and let them move. You get the point. So go today full of the knowledge and full of the power to share that good news. Hopefully you know it by now. No one is beyond the power of God's grace. Amen.